Hello, everyone. Welcome to this new live session of Customity. We're going to get started in just two minutes. My name is Josema. I'm Customer Success Manager at Customity. And together with Morena, we will be hosting this presentation and showing you the basics of the app. Now, this is our last live session of the year. So we are going to be opening a Q&A right away. And you'll be able to ask questions along the way on the chat. And we're going to be answering them on the presentation. So let's start with the first one. We received a question about how to set up size variants for product bases. So for that, let me share the screen. So in Customity, when we are creating a product base, we can set up multiple variants depending on the type of product we want to create. If we want to create uh, a product that will have multiple colors, what we will do is add the images of that product in that many colors. But when we want to add size, that is different. And for that, we're going to create a new product base. This <clears throat> product base, we're going to assume that each, um, each size will entitle a different print file. So uh, because it will entitle a different size in the print as well as on the product itself. So I'm going to create a new product base. We're going to call this um, this t-shirt three colors, three sizes, right? And let's say we have our understanding that uh, our, our particular t-shirt will have three sizes, kid, uh, teen, and adult. And for the kid, the print area will be, for example, 20 by 20 centimeters, right? So we're going to create that print area right away. We will print in PNG 300, and we can jump to the next stage. And in the next step, we are going to set up the preview. And the preview, if you recall, is by adding product images. So we're going to add product image. And for that, we have these three images here. When we pick three images, we are establishing, or we can establish, three color variants. Whenever the three images are here, we can grab the print area, and we can adjust this like this. So it's going to be, uh, in relation, will be 20 by 20 centimeters is what we established for the kill size. OK? Now let's click Done and Next. And when we are ready to save this product base, we are always prompted, what do we want to do about the variant? Now we have three variants. Uh, we can rename this as um, black, gray, white. And before we save, we can add another print size. And that's very important. So by clicking here, we are populating uh, our size variant for this particular product. So right now we have an existing size of 200 by 200. The teens will have uh, 25 by 25, uh, 250 by 250. So our print area will adjust to that new size. And we can click Next. And we can even uh, and we can set up our print area to show the way we want on the preview as well like that. The product images are already here because we are carrying the information from the original size. We are just adjusting this because probably the print size will be slightly bigger. OK? And we can click Done, Next. And again, we save, and we add another variant for the size. This one will be for the adult. So we are going to change this to 300 by 300. And that will be our last variant. The print area will adjust, of course. And we can click Next to adjust the print area and try to make it slightly bigger, because this should be like the biggest size for, uh, for adult. Sometimes if the size of the product will change along with the print, probably the proportion will be the same. But it's not something that you, as the owner of this product base, will be able to establish. Once we are done and we save, 
this product base, we are going to have free color variants and free size variants. And whenever we create a new product out of this product base with any design, what will happen is Customity will create three different templates and will create the instructions. So whenever you pick on a size variant, the right template will show up because each template will have a different print size. So if we go to start and we create a new product and we pick our product base and we try to go for this is the uh, t-shirt three colors right and we pick you see here are the variants we have created we have the colors and the sizes and we click next and we put a design let's put a, a really simple design something we can easily um we can easily uh, create right away. You will see that the end result will be um, a design on and free images that you will change. They will change with the color variant and free templates that will load depending on the size variant. Each template will print in 200 by 200, 250 by 250, and 300 by 300. That's how you add multiple size variants to your product base. So this is the finished product. We have black, we have gray, and we have white, and we have different sizes. So if I were to pick 250, you see how a new template is loading. And then I'm going to type K as in Kevin, right? And I'm going to save this as the product image. That's one image. But what if I want to show different colors? What I can do is go here and go to gray, right? We didn't add any. So we're going to type A and set uh, Ember. And I'm going to click Preview. But when I click Preview, I see this zoom in. And I can right click and save image as. And I can save this as a listing number two, and that's it. Now I can keep my product, I can publish my product or save it. I'm going to just save it as a draft, but I can still see this in customity backend and I can see this in here as well. So while we are here, and if I check on my backend and I see my product, as the last one created, I can open this and add new images to the product. So you have the chance to quickly create images from customity revision and then and save them to add them later to your product. OK, let's check out another question. How do you customize the image background behind the item in the preview? Well, uh, of course, if you want to change the background image of your, um, your product after you have created the product because your product base had one image and maybe you updated your quality or you wanted an what you can always do is in customity, when you check your product in the back end, in the store section, you can go and you have link it to customity. Let's filter this by link to customity and look for the t-shirt. Uh, this one, t-shirt floaters. So this is the product we created. And here you see the picture, you see the size, you see the template. And remember we have three templates, but in any case we have one template or you can always check the other templates by clicking product variants, go to size and find each template here. What you can always do is edit these templates. You can click on the box here to open it out on another tab. And when you edit the template, just like that, you will see that you have the print area. You don't want to touch this. This is printing. But if you go to the next step, which is the preview setting, you have this dynamic image that has the product images. 
So we have one image for black, one for gray, one for white. And if you want to change these images, all you have to do is click on Upload Images, and you can just change them. So let me see if we have something in different colors. But let's say that for some reason, we actually want these to be um, upside down. So right. So all I have to do is, let's say I want to sw switch this uh, or, or swap this. So I can go to these product images, and I don't have to even upload anything. All I have to do is click on the flip, and that's it. Of course, my design needs to be flipped as well. Don't forget about that. And probably adjust a bit. But just that. OK, and now everything has been changed, and I can click Next and Save. And I have changed the background image. I flip it or I uploaded new images and I adjusted my design and still printing the same. That's the important thing. But you can always go to the template, change the background image or modify the background image and save it. And that will update right away in your front end. OK, let's check. We have a question. Um, um, we, you have products already in your store that you would like to add personalization to. So how do we do this? Well, if you have your existing products and you want to add customization, you will go straight and create a template. Right now, what we did was modify a template that customly created for us by combining design and product base, correct? That's one way of creating a template. The advantage of this merging process is that you not only create a template, but you also create a new product in the store. Now, if you want to use an existing product, all you have to do is go to the store section, find, of course, uh, go to link products and filter by those products that don't have any, uh, they are not linked to custom, which is if you're starting with custom, it's probably going to be the most of them. But you can always filter in here. When I say not linked, I will find that I have these school labels or this tote bag. I'm selling this tote bag, and I want to turn this customizable. So I click here, and you see Customity allows us to pick a template, and from that template create the options, or pick another option set we have saved in our collection. But you can always link any template that you have or you create with any product that you want. Let's say I can go and choose template and I see my collection. If I don't have any templates, of course, what I need to do is I need to go to the template section and create a new template. Creating a new template basically will allow you to set the print file with all the customizable elements and set the preview with the customizable elements plus the images of the product. In the end, you end up with what you saw in our example here. You see the print on one side and you see the preview on the other side. But by creating the template, you craft that by hand and have full control of all the details. Once you're finished that template, you click here, choose template, and you find that in your collection. Let me go and see if I can have a tote bag. OK, so I do have a design for a tote bag. I'm going to pick this one. I, ha I probably have this template working on another product, but it's OK because you can always pick any template for any product. And if you don't have the option, you can click here to create the app right away or say not now. And that way, you are turning this tote bag into a customizable product because now you are instructing the loading of a template in an option set on the front end. Let's just, OK, finished. We can click on Save Product. And if you want to see this working, just click on the eye icon, and it will go straight to your store to show you the front end. This is the tote bag. And now custom it is loading because you instructed that to show on the front end. Of course, the, um, the alignment will depend entirely on how you create your template. This picture of the tote bag will be replaced by the custom live preview uh, of the template. 
It's not that we are going to be loading inside of this image. We will replace that with whatever we have in our template. So make sure when you, you want to turn one of your products into something customizable, make sure you have all the images. You have images of your product in all possible colors, sizes, or whatever. You have those images blank without customization. You know exactly where the custom part will be, how it's going to look. So everything that you need as graphics to make sure you portray uh, your product as real as possible, but being customizable, you need to have it in order to upload that to the template. If one day you decide you no longer want to customize this product, all you have to do is go back to Customity, click on the X here and click on here, save the product, and your listing will return to whatever it was before Customity. Just like that, a simple product that you can add to cart at any moment. Let me check another question. If there is an issue with the design, is it possible to fix it? Yes, um, it could happen that sometimes the design you have selected doesn't have the same proportions as the print area or the print file of the product you selected. Uh, for example, if you pick a, um, <clears throat> let's say we are going to the start section. We create a new product. Let's say we create uh, a mug. Right, so we're going to click, for example, custom cut, and we're going to pick one of these mugs. Okay, the 15 could be the let's filter this by 15. So this is a wraparound mug, and it has a, a rectangle two by one in proportion print area. Correct. So if we um, now let's you know what let's go back because uh, we're going to pick the 15. Okay. So whenever we are ready to we pick all the bars if necessary. Well, next, and let's say we pick a customity design, and the customity design is actually square. So by default, customity will try to fit that square design in the print area centered. So it's going to show in the uh, in the wraparound of the mug. It's going to show probably on the right opposite to the handle. Let's pick uh, any any Christmas. Uh, Wait, a new Christmas design. One of the last ones that we have tried. Um, okay, this was a uh, <clears throat> a mug. Okay, so yeah, cool. This one. Let's give it a second so we can create this because this design is square. is going to uh, is going to fit on the center of the print area. And of course, you're going to finish this process and you will see that the product was not created exactly as you expected. But you can always fix that because as we saw before, you can always edit the template. So you have a template that has been created exclusively for this design with the combination of print area, the mockup, and the design from Customity. And it shows like this, of course, it's showing opposite to the handle exactly this will print exactly as you see it here if you don't like this because it was not what you had in mind don't worry all you have to do is click save draft to be taken to the customity backend where you can identify the options of this particular product and the template of this particular product and if we click on the box with the arrow to edit the template it will be filtered out and you can click edit to see what was created. Now, most print on demand providers have print templates and print guides. So you don't, uh, you don't miss anything on the process of, of creating new things. And right now what happened is our design, which involves the title, involves the cut, and let me see if I can preview one of the cuts. Let's preview uh, the cut number 36. There you go. Oh, it's like this, it's fluffy. And the woman will have a name in here and the skin color of the woman is somewhere around here. So I can preview one skin color. I can preview the drink is there, yeah. The scarf is not here, but we can preview the scarf. 
preview a sweater, let's preview sweater number five, just for example. The skin color of the other arm is here and also here. We are previewing all pieces of the character so we can at least see where is the where is the character on the composition of our design. In the background also, we're going to preview one, or we can preview the other one, and like that. Yeah, we have, yeah, this, this other background. I like this one. Okay, so this is the design printing on the mug. The handle starts here and it ends up here, so this shows in the middle. If we want to rearrange this, we can just grab everything and move it around and put it anywhere we want. Now, where should we put this? Here, 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 or anywhere. Where do we need this put? And that's what I was mentioning, that you can use um, the guides from the print-on-demand provider. Those are great files. And you can always, because you are on the, on the template, you can always add new items, add text boxes, placeholders, or dynamic images. And we can grab a dynamic image and upload if we have that information that we can easily download from any print-on-demand provider. I'm going to just upload this. Um, I have this guide for a mug, right? And if I extend this, I can extend this like this or this or just click on Fit to Canvas, right? So this is a printing guide from Custom Cut in this case that will show us exactly the print size, the safe area, the margins, and the print around everything. So this is our, we can double click here to call this the guide and drag it all the way down like that. We can even lock it so we don't move this by accident. But now if we can grab everything about our custom design, let's grab everything. Where's the cat? The dog. Oh, wait. Uh, we have a dog here. We do have a dog. And the cat is here. And the dog is here with the name. So we just suddenly move this by accident, but we can, yeah, nothing happened. So let's grab everything together from the first one on the top all the way down to the background. Holding the shift key and clicking will grab everything, including all layouts and then we can move this and make sure we center this following the guides here the art center here will print on the side of the handle to the left like this and if we think this is too big we can position this or make sure it's a bit smaller and keep it centered for example everything like that this is how you put together the design exactly the way you want this printed. Then, if you don't want this guide, you can just click here to hide it. Then we click Next. And remember, we were able to adjust the, the print. Now we're going to adjust the preview. In the preview, we do have the guide. And we can actually trigger this open and play around to slightly show this. Let me see if I can. Oh, the guide is locked, sorry. Okay, let's unlock this. And let's say that our guide should be like this. Let's probably like that, okay? So if we, this is our guide and the rest is our design, all we have to do is position this and make sure everything is the way we saw this on the print, right? Okay, so now we're going to do, we were in this stage and we, do next and don't worry about the guide the guide will always show in here but you see how the print will go on the left side and it will preview also on the left side of course we can always go and play with our characters just to see how they look anything is connected between the preview and the print, and we save. 
So even if our design was not perfectly centered at the beginning, we always have the chance to go inside the template and arrange that exactly the way we want this. Now, the reason why it wasn't created uh, like that in the beginning is because uh, we always center the designs on the print area. And when the proportions are not the same, then you will see empty space around just to make sure everything fits. We never deform or stretch out any design. In a customer upload situation, how do we get the file after an order is placed? Um, always you will have, um, for any e-commerce user, any e-commerce platform, in the order dashboard of that e-commerce, you will always find the information from custom. That, in, that includes any text that was input, any selection of color, font, etc., the link to download the preview from Customity, the link to download the print file, and the link to download whatever original image was uploaded. So you always have the backup information of the, um, of the images that your customers uploaded. If we go, for example, in this case, I do have a, a couple of orders here. And you can see if I pick this, I will see that inside the order, I have all the details of Customity. So I have the Customity preview, the thumbnail, the URL, if I want to open this on the product, the print file, and the two images I uploaded. So if I click on the preview, I will see what the customer saw on the front end. They saw this. Then if I click on the production URL, I will see what the, what the fulfillment needed to print that. And if they need to adjust anything at all, the original image is here when it says upload your photo. That's the original image. So everything gets stored in the e-commerce order dashboard. And for Shopify users, we have the uh, the order dashboard here. This is a order backup manager. Right now, it will not show my orders because they are from some time ago. But in any case, orders done with Customity will show up in here. Obviously, here you will see all the orders from your e-commerce, including or not including Customity. But everything is backup. Exactly. You see, when it says type the song name, you also see what the customer typed and what they selected at each point. Uh, there's a comment on our last explanation about the, um, the designs not fitting because we had an ornament, for example, instead of a, of a mug. It's actually the same concept. The thing with the ornaments is that ornaments have a lot of bleed and wrap around, uh, and, sorry, and wrapping extensions that we don't contemplate because the, um, the POD will need a specific print size, but you will have a lot of extra space that you don't need. For example, let's create an ornament. Like this. And let's pick, uh, let's go next and pick a custom design. That could be any of this. Yeah, let's go for this. Uh, in fact, let's go for this because it's going to be a very interesting example. Let's give it a second. This is pretty much done. Saving product. Probably what the uh, what we are being mentioned is that when you do this creation, this ornament with this custom design, it goes outside of the edges like this and probably not perfectly centered. The reason for this, and I do have the print guide for this product, so you will see what the problem is. I'm going to save draft again so I can access the template in here. I'm going to click here to open the template. Let's go and edit. And the same thing I did with the mug, I can actually do with this. Basically, our design will try and fit the entire print 
size of the ornament, which is 80, almost 84 by 84, right? So we have the red, we have the ribbon, we have everything in the, in the title. The problem is that it's not, it's still outside of the boundaries. And the reason for that, if we add a dynamic image and we upload the ornament, is that you will see that the original file, the original specification from the from the POD states that the view, the view all part is the white one with a margin and a safe area. And the rest is a bleed for wrapping purposes, but to ensure that you don't want a, um, you want a background fully completing this or you want a, um, any any graphics to go to the to the edges without any any cutout on the on the border if, if we have a circle design and we make it sure it cuts to the border most likely it will show that cutting so you bleed out this and if you bleed out to make sure no borders will be shown you create this 83.9 by 83.9 square so if I start to push this down, let's start moving this down. You will start to see how the design was actually uh, uh, way outside of the boundaries of the product, but not because it was a mistake or it was too big, it's because the print size needed is way bigger than the safe area. So you need to adjust the safe area. And we cannot... Um, preview this right from the beginning. And the reason for this is, okay, let's go like that, okay? So that's for this. Now, doesn't seem like a big of a deal, right? Um, but we can always grab this and try to see if we can fit this, okay? So if we don't want this printing or we want this printing outside, we may want to extend this. But if we extend this and the breath, we can hide the breath, the rest seems to be very close to the uh, safe areas. So maybe I can grab the ribbon and grab the pets and the title, but keep the red background in there. Okay. I'm probably going to need to center this, but what I can do is I can reduce this in a way that I will be on the safe area. Like that. Also, I can check the pets so I can check the, for example, the dog breeds number two and the cat breed as well. And the third dog, the third cat, I, I can see if all possible designs will fit in the worst case scenario. So they are fitting, right? The title is fitting. Everything seems to be there. Two pets will be the same. One pet will be the same. The title is here. So we only need to open the breath again. Breath is not perfectly centered. So let's center this a bit if we see this extending of course we can always make it bigger why because this will not print or we will be cut off in the bleed you have to worry about that i don't know if, if the hello christmas should be on top of the red i think it does but once we have this working exactly for our guide here yeah we can hide it and print like this, it doesn't matter because in the end, part of this will be cut off. Now, in the preview, you will see that you will need to do those same adjustments as well. For example, if we open the guide and we see this, the guide should be smaller to make sure we fit exactly with the bleed and everything as it has been stated by the POD. So this is the way you should see the guide, like that. I placed the guide exactly as it will print, and the bleed is what wraps uh, on, the, uh, on the back of the ornament, usually. So this is what you need showing. And so what we do is we grab the ribbon and we grab the and the title. Uh, if you recall, we made this smaller and centered, just like that. And the um, the red, of course, is uh, we need to put it on top of the guide like that. 
Now the red is pretty big, so if you recall, this was slightly like this and had to be centered this way. I think it was even smaller, like that. Yeah, it was kind of a small bleed in there. So basically, and then we had the guide. So this is exactly what is going to print, how it's going to look. And the reason why you saw this too big is because it was contemplating the bleeds that this specific product in particular has uh, as a basic set, okay? So those things, if you have the specifications from the POD, you can always fix them in family, and that's the great thing about the app. Okay, there's a question about swatches that I had this before. Um, let's check out, let's actually check out this product. We, we were here originally, right? And, and um, we have uh, this product, let's preview this. Even though the image you see there, the image of the listing is not properly, uh, is not properly uh, uh, um, updated, remember you can always pick, for example, uh, you can go uh, one pet, um breath decorated uh, hello christmas um okay yes decorated and pet name charlie and it's a dog breathe beagle right so this is the preview and remember you can always click here zoom in and save this image later replace the listing you have on your, uh, the listing image you have in your store. What if we want to do some adjustments to the options? Remember, these options are fully customizable. They are automatically done by Customity, but nothing stops you from adjusting this a bit more. So for example, if we want to modify these options, we can go here to the setting of the product when we template and we also see the options. We click on the options and in the options we can actually preview them in here. Let's preview and let's have like 40 options per page. So the you start by number of pets and red decorations if you want decorated or no decorated and choose option. These are drop downs. And when we pick uh, one pet and we choose dog, these are swatches. So if we click on the title here, you see there's a button here called locate this. This is a swatch. The type of option is a swatch. And if we click on number of pets, this is type of option is a drop down. So we can always change between swatches and drop downs without losing information. Because if you scroll a bit down, you will see that basically what you have are values. You have one, two, three pets. You can modify this. You can click to open, change the name, do whatever you want. But if we come here and we change this type of option to a swatch, of course, it will tell you it's a swatch and it will allow you to show images. So whenever we click here to open, we see the value, but we also see the chance to upload an image. So I can upload, let me see if I have something wrong here. Okay, I'm just going to use this. I can change this. So one pet will be the heart and two pets will be the diamond. Okay, so that way you modify any swatch you want. If you go here, you can go and this is this is a swatch actually you can come here and you can click to open and see the swatches already here you can remove them and upload your own if you want to change them all the time and if you don't want any swatches but you actually want colors you can remove the image and pick a color and that color will show by default the same goes here if we remove this and we change this it will show by default and the swatch three will be the same. I'm going to pick something like that. Maybe a blue. Okay. Right? So 
It didn't update yet. Uh, how did I? Okay, like that. So you can always change this and you can modify whatever swatch you want. In fact, if you start clicking here and you open all these are swatches, you can change at any time. Uh, very useful when you have small graphics that you want to improve and to show an example, you craft your own uh, your own thumbnails and you upload them here for a better user experience. Save it and it will reflect right away in your storefront. Okay, let's come here and refresh. And now you have the number of pets is one, two, and three pets, just like that. It's still the same function, but you are able to change the swatches. There's a question that I wanted to connect here that is, uh, is, is the production file the one you should trust when creating the product? When it sometimes doesn't correspond to the preview or the images are out of frame. We have seen this. The print file is very important, is the most important thing. You can set that up in the template right there, or it will always center on the print area of any product you select from a POD. But whenever you fix that, you make sure that the print, which is the important part because it will fulfill eventually, the print should always be exact as it's going to be. Then the preview is something you can adjust and slightly modify to create the necessary effect. Remember that the preview you see right here, uh, of course, the color would not be the same. The background is something different. The glow and whatever. This is not a extremely perfect representation of a real product because it's not a photo of a product, but it's, it's actually a, um, a mock-up but we try to make it as real as possible. But as any mock-up, you can do slight adjustments without any problems just to make sure you represent the most realistic way uh, whatever you're selling. So yes, the print is the most important part. Making sure the print will go out perfectly will allow you to play a bit with the preview. And after resizing the ornament in the template, how do I get the new product photo for my store? We have seen that also. We click Preview to save this image and go to our um, backend and replace that. Let's just, yeah, we come here to the ornament and we replace the media or we even add more media. How do we get the file when the order is placed? We um, answered that a bit earlier um, and always in the order dashboard of your e-commerce, you will see in every order data the information of the customization. In this case, we uploaded an image and you see that you have links to download everything, the preview that the customer sees, and that will be the preview, the production URL, this is the print file that is like this, is really high quality printable PNG, and also whatever image the customers uploaded will be here listed as the original image in the upload your photo or upload photo one, two, and three. So everything is kept in our server. You have links for everything and you can retrieve the original image if you need to. This runs equally for all e-commerce platforms that we integrate with. Thank you, Josema. I know uh, Andrew was asking regarding the libraries, and I will be more than happy to show how libraries work with Customily. Um, in the past live sessions, we have covered a bunch of libraries. We have created all kinds of different libraries, so I'm going to be work showing them from here. For those who do, know, do not know how to create a library, it's super easy, I promise to you that. You want to go to a library section. Then you have different libraries, either color, font, vectors, or images. You go to click Add a Library. You can also back upload, but for now, we're going to stay with this one. And this one, we're going to name it, for example, uh, Flowers, because I was trying a Flowers one earlier. And then you can either, if you have a lot of images, like I would say if you have over 10, over 20, I will add categories. It will be, make it much easier and customly will automatically turn those categories into swatches. But if not, you can always work with add images. Uh, always try to make sure the image is uploading in position two. 
So the number one is always empty and you can give it your clients the option between choosing. And then we're gonna go to look for the assets. Here they are. And let's go with flowers. So I have these four beautiful flowers and this is how I blow my library. I have the initial position number two. And sorry, <laughs> there we go. And I have this four selected files. I just click on create images. There you go. This could take a second. Uh, the bigger the library, the longer it will take. So patience is always great. Okay, perfect. So I have my library. So Andrew, let's create the design you were talking about. So for it, uh, let's go to create design. You wanted a design where people uh, couldn't change could then change the main phrase, but they could change the options. So for example, let's pretend my flowers are designs. Or let me see. Um, you can always search for the, through this, it's much easier. And you go to flowers and there we go. Let's pretend, we can always pretend this is a phrase or this is something you want your uh, clients to choose from. So option one is always gonna be empty. Remember that, so to see a flower, just click on option two and then they show up. They choose the other library, which just happens to have too many flowers here. And there we go. Perfect. Uh, my advice is do better than me and actually be more careful and descriptive with the library so it's easier to tell them apart. And there we go. This is a flower from the library we just created. Uh, if I'm going too fast, please someone let me go. <laughs> let me know. I can do that sometimes. And then you add a, a text box so people can write their own phrases or you don't want them to change that. That's also doable. For example, I want to write, you are the prettiest, oh, there we go, flower in the garden. Let's, gonna, let's resize this. So here we have the, the, um, the text we don't want them to change. And this is the thing we want them to uh, choose from. So we have a text. We don't. We won't want our clients to change. We want always to have the same text. And then we want a flower or another phrase, either mom, dad. Those are all dynamic images. You can always replace them that you want your clients to choose from. So let's make this a bit prettier because we can do better than this. Um, remember, you can also upload fonts to the library so you can have a complete library as we, as we do here. Uh, let's go with the right fonts because I think those are the prettiest ones. Give it a second. Oh, no, it's not. Uh, there we go. Let's try with these ones. There we go. So we have a phrase that won't change and an image we want our clients to choose from or this could be mom, dad, whatever you think it's gonna be fit better. I uh, will click done and we say the design, I'm gonna resize it to make it a bit smaller. This is a bit big for what I want to do. There we go. That's much better. You can always zoom in, zoom out uh, manually. So either by clicking down here or I, I have a MacBook, so I do it with, my, uh, with the trackpad. And you save the design. So now I want what I want to do is apply the design to a new product. This we are doing it just as an example on how it will look at the end and how we can make sure we have the phrase that changes and I mean the phrase that doesn't change and the phrase that changes. So let's choose a product base. We're gonna make something really quick. Uh, let's go with the pillows. Pillows are always a great present and more for the holidays. There we go. We pick from our designs. Uh, we, I know I didn't put a name at the beginning. That was my bad. So I just searched through it through sample. And there we go. We just search this. And remember, this moment can take a couple of seconds. So meanwhile, um, we just wait. Okay, perfect. So now we have the pillow with the flowers. 
the colors and the text that does change. There we go, father and daughter. And I want to save this draft and I'm going I'm to show you how to make sure the second phrase it doesn't change. So this one, this part gets a bit harder. So I'm going to go really slow, but please raise any question you may have. You want to go to the option set. So here's the option label is what your client will be seeing on the, screen, on the shop. So you can always change that to, for example, let's say, uh, choose your favorite flower. This could be either like choose to who this gift is for or choose who's going to receive the, this gift, whatever you think is better. And then when you go down, you will see the such values. And when you click on the swatch, you see the flower itself. That's in the image position, option number two. Uh, we always recommend have one selected. So whenever a client just logs in and looks at the product, it will previously have something to see. And we're going to change the number of the flowers. So it, it looks better in the front end. So we have flower one. Flower two, flower three, and flower number four. There we go. You can see that because I wrote the same one that's previously written, it's going to tell me that's not an option. So I just change it for something else. Always remember to save the option set here as you work to make sure you don't lose anything. The same with Word or any or anything you work like this. So we have the uh, made our first option, which is going to make it small again. And then the text input. This is a part of the text we don't want them to change. This is a phrase we always want to be available. So first of all, we're going to write it. Uh, we wanted to say uh, the prettiest flower in the garden. That way, our clients will know what's the phrase that's going to say. So instead of um, the placeholders will be, will, will be appearing on our product. And we want to hide the option. We don't want to give them the change to change it. This is this way, if you hide the option, they cannot change this. So they always get the prettiest flower in the garden as the main option. And there we go. We save the option set. And then we just go back to store. Again, let me know if I'm going too fast. Oh, I think someone is writing. No, it's not. Perfect. Uh, let's make sure we have everything properly. We don't want them to see the option set. Everything looks good. Yes, yes, Andrew. We perfil it with what we want and hide the option. That way you make sure no one changes it at all. It's always going to be the same sentences. And you can always duplicate either the option set or the product. So you have many options. But yeah, it's... Once you get the hang of it, uh, customing is way easier to use than it looks like. I promise you that. Uh, let's go back to store so we can publish our beautiful pillow with our flower set. So we just go to products. Uh, we do like Jose Madi today. We look for something that's not linked. And I'm going to take borrow this tote bag. So we're going to look for our template that has the pillow and the flowers. It's going to be. Uh, let's see. There we go. You can see it's the last one. Always remember that last pro uh, template created always shows last. And always make sure to write better names than I did. It's going to be much easier to find it. Uh, it will ask us if you want to create an option set. But because we already personalized it one, we just click not now. And we click assign another option set. And again, last one, or we can search it. Uh, there we go. Okay, perfect. Okay, so before you go, we have a special surprise for you, so don't evacuate just yet. Uh, Morena, can, if you can join me as well. Hello, I'm back. Okay. So, well, uh, we are wrapping up an amazing experiment we created back in April. It was a great journey, 70 live sessions, uh, pretty much twice the products. Um, it was really amazing. And it was all done by the people joining, asking questions, sending over uh, uh, feedback on Facebook, on chat and emails. So we're very thankful for that, for all the support. Uh, next year, we're going to be coming up with something very new. So uh, stick around. And we wanted to wrap up this with a video 
that our friends also because along the year um cecilia and ezekiel joined the live session as well and supported us a lot on the chat on the editing of the videos on the promotion and the graphics for the videos so we appreciate that a lot shout and, out to the amazing marketing team we have a custom because they really made sure you got the videos as soon as possible and as fast as possible so the real heroes here are ceci and exit so we wanted to thank you both of them from here yeah, they're very silent on the chat, but they should uh, uh, acknowledge. I mean, it, it's been a great team effort to put this together, to also reply to the comments on the videos as well, and sharing uh, specific moments of the video, specific live sessions to all people asking stuff around. So uh, this has been a great, uh, um, a, a, a great process of creation for a lot of material that will stick with you. And you're always welcome to watch them on the YouTube channel, to follow them along. Remember that these are interactive videos. You don't need to sit back and watch. You can follow. You can grab the same files we show, and you can do the same in your stores and uh, um, exactly follow what we do and get the same results and even better results. So um, let us, let me check. Uh, we're going to share with you uh, Cool video about the live sessions this 2023. Okay, um, well, that's all for today. That's all for this year. It's not the end of anything. Just to see you soon. And um, thank you all again from me giving out <laughs> heart health and everything. Morena giving out fingers and, <laughs> and brain cells. Uh, Cecilia giving out uh, hours of editing and enjoying all the events that happen live, uh, like any live event, and also uh, Ezekiel giving out uh, a lot of creativity in pushing these creating graphics and always supporting us a lot. Um, as always, support will be uh, available all the time. Don't forget at the end that you can always reach out to us, uh, always can send us an email or open a live chat. We're always going to be there and on the facebook communities there's a lot of activity so keep an eye on people helping out others sharing videos sharing experiences that's a great uh way also to know who's family okay um and well that's uh all for today uh thank you all again uh and morena if you want to say anything else Thank you for an amazing 2023. We hope to see you in 2024. You really made this worth it, and we had a lot of fun doing it. Definitely. OK, well, thank you all, and have a great, happy holidays. See you back next year. Bye bye.